Hi everyone, you're with Lucy and today I'm going to be doing a painting of an iris and I really wanted to talk about when we do this iris painting, I really want to talk about trying to play and make mistakes. So in this iris painting, I'm not going to be doing it as a tutorial where I know exactly what I'm going to do when I start. So what I'm going to do is it's going to let it evolve but we're going to be doing some fun things because we're going to be using watercolor pencils and also prismacolor pencils to use to create some techniques so this is just a loose picture and i'll just show you the photo so this is the iris picture that we're going to do and i hope you enjoy doing it give it a go it's a very very simple thing if you don't have prismacolor pencils you can also use china graph pencils so give it a go it's lots of fun So before we start, I'm going to quickly explain to you the difference about the pencils that we're going to be using. So you can use any watercolor paints for this, but I am, and I'm also using a little bit of gouache later. But the difference between watercolor pencils and Prismacolor standard coloring in pencils. So these Prismacolor pencils are waxed based and being wax based, they will create a resist with your watercolors. And that is terrific because they're colored resist pencils so for watercolors that it gives you a whole new level to what you're doing watercolor pencils are great to draw with because sometimes we don't want those pencil lines left behind and if you use the right color watercolor pencil you can draw your picture and not have any problems with it being left behind later so you need to think about what colors you are using when you're doing that but it's definitely a way of not having those harsh pencil lines as well now, if you really like my videos, please make sure you subscribe. I'll be making more watercolor pitch painting videos as well as mixed media and many other things that you'll enjoy. So let's get started and get painting. So to create this very loose version of this iris, I'm going to use some Prismacolor pencils alongside my watercolors. And it's really quite fun to do this project. It's very loose and very exciting to do. Now, instead of using a pencil to color or to draw my image, I'm actually going to use a watercolor pencil and I'm going to draw the image with a watercolor pencil, it's particularly the flower. You can change to a green one if you want to do that for the actual stem, but I think I'm going to use the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is just very loosely draw the shape. So this isn't something I can erase. So I'm kind of just looking at the shape, but this is going to be quite a loose picture. So I'm really not worried if I get the color in or not. So as I draw this, I'm just going to make it very kind of loose. I'm just looking at the picture and going, what do I need to have in here? So, and some of it will go over the lines and the fact that we're using watercolor paper is going to be a benefit in this case. So, you know, we're um, just playing with lines and I'm kind of looking at where I see these dark lines in the flower and because I'm using this watercolor pencil, this will actually aid in the coloring of it when we start painting. So I can sort of see dark areas and you know, this, this leaf or this petal here is quite dark. So I'm even just going to add a little bit of this. So this is a little bit mixed media. We're not going to be just using our um, watercolors where we are going to be using some other things. There is such an interesting flower, these irises, they go all different directions and you can't really get it wrong because there is no absolute right or wrong way. So, so long as we get it looking a little bit like an iris, I will be happy. So you can see there, I've got all this loose kind of stuff happening. Now there's also that center bit where I'm going to have the leaf and this little 
sort of dark section in the center here. Now I've used a blue pencil for this. It really wouldn't matter um, blue or purple, but because I see kind of blue edges on this, I'm, I'm leaning towards blue because I'm gonna be using a lot of purple in this actual image. And then I'm just gonna drop the stem part. Now irises always have that lovely kind of um, rolled up leaf effect and I can also see that this nearly forgot this bit here so this is going to be an experiment in using some different pencils with my watercolors so I have my iris drawn and now I'm going to use my Prismacolor pencils now why Prismacolor pencils Prismacolor pencils are a wax-based pencil, so they very much are um, going to make a little bit of a difference with resisting, so that's why I'm going to use them. I'm sorry if I had a few colour changes in this video. I'm just playing with another camera and um, I keep noticing it changes colour. So once we start colouring, I want it to be right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my Prisma colour pencil to colour in this yellow area here. Because, and I'm going to use it quite thick because I don't want at any point in time for to have the other colours in here. So I'm just using this as a kind of resist. So I'm using this, this yellow to create a resist. And because they're wax based, even if I accidentally get a little bit of color on it, it won't matter. And I can kind of see that there's just a little bit of yellow here, and there's a little bit of yellow happening there. And then I'm going to take my white Prismacolor pencil. This is actually just slightly off white, but I'm gonna use my white pencil I'm just going to put a bit of that here. Now you can use this or a China Graph pencil, whichever you like. So um, it's just causing a, like a wax resist. And it's sometimes good not to use an absolutely white pencil because you may get a little effects that you don't want. Now with my blue pencil again, I'm just going to go around to these leaves or petals and I'm just adding some of this kind of color to it. Just some of the texture. Just putting a little bit of the shading with my pencil and kind of getting some of the colors in where I see them to be dark. So this little bit here that folds over is all pretty much dark. So this one here is a watercolor pencil, not a Prismacolor pencil. Okay, so the yellow was done with the Prismacolor pencil. Now I'm using watercolor pencil. Now what I'm going to do is quite roughly, I'm gonna take some great, beautiful um, purple. So depending on what purple you have, this is a violet. And I'm taking this violet, get my pencil out of the way, and getting some of that ready. It's going to be quite wet. I do prefer a ceramic um, palette for this, but I don't have one on my table. And I'm also taking some magenta, because you can see here there's magenta in there. So I'm taking some magenta. Getting it all ready. I love to get my colors ready. I'm going to have some green ready. Let's get this lovely green going. So I've got my paints ready. Then I'm going to take my brush with clean water and I am going to brush completely over this. Now you're probably going, oh my gosh, it's bleeding everywhere. I do want to do a really loose painting, so I don't mind that it's bleeding. Then I'm going to just take <coughs> my purple and I'm going to start colouring where I had those petals. So 
And you can see there the yellow is absolutely resisting, which is fantastic. So I've got a bit of yellow. I'm going to take it a bit stronger, the um, purple. So what I'm doing now is really very much creating the loose iris. I'm not not trying to create a perfect image, but having that watercolor pencil, it's it's really just bled into it and it makes it an exciting kind of picture. And I'm just seeing here that I want to get a little line of color off. So I'm just wiping my brush, drying it, taking a bit of color off there. And I'm starting to get that shape of the iris, even though I've um, just basically thrown it together. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of paper towel because I don't want that yellow to be covered. And you can see here, you can just go back with a piece of paper towel, clean that yellow off and that yellow stays perfectly nice and so does the white. So you can just use your paper towel, dab that off and we still have that beautiful yellow there. And that's, you know, it's a great way of doing it. So if you, you know, if you really want to get that resist look, you want to get those highlights of yellow in places, it's a perfect way to use it. Now I'm going to take some blue here on my brush because I kind of see blue happening here. And very loosely adding that blue around there to give me that. Then a little bit of extra purple. So I'm being completely um, loose with the brushwork. I'm not trying to create an image perfectly. Okay, so now I'm just going to add the green in here and then I'm going to dry this off. But before I do, I'm going to give it a little bit of a splatter. I'm just taking some of this pink and I'm just going to give it a little splatter here and there. And because I've got that yellow in the center, I really want that to also sing a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and splatter it. I'm going to give it a dry and then I'm going to work on the next part. Okay, so now I'm looking at my picture thinking, oh, I need to really get some of that detail in a little bit. Now, I, even though I want it to be soft, I still want it to look like the flower. So I'm going to draw this section here back in with my watercolor pencil, because this is a kind of important part of the flower. It's the center and it's kind of the focal point. So I'm just using my watercolor pencil to kind of do a little bit of a loose center section into the flower here and definitely those shadow areas. I'm going to take a little bit of this purple pencil in here too and just add some of that into there. Now this is the watercolor pencil, remember? So we really want to make sure in this case that we're using the watercolor pencil in the right area. Now, I'm going to work on this petal here. Now I kind of didn't get too much of div division, so I'm just going to now take that center. I'm looking at the center area here and I'm just kind of giving it that. And then this one kind of just very loosely the color is there and what I can really see so this is about observing what you're looking at is I can kind of see a ruffle here where we separate the petals and that's what I kind of want to emulate here so this petal here is brighter than this petal here and whereas the edge of this petal is quite dark so I'm just adding that there and then I'm going to add this dark area here. The one thing I'm noticing about this dark area is that it has a lot of blue in it. So I'm just going to kind of add a bit of blue and I want it to be very loose and um, soft. So 
just taking that and this one here is quite kind of it's ribbly so you, you know be with your brush don't try to get nice neat edges we're doing an iris here and very much we want it to be soft and flowing and kind of starting to look a little like a creature isn't it this one here I'm going to use some blue and the one I do want to have a little bit of detail in is this one and I'm going to use my brush like this way and kind of create a lacy effect I don't want that to stand out quite as much I'm going to take this through and you can see here how I'm creating that lacy effect and this little petal here I'm just going to go a little bit of a brushing and you can see how it, it starts to develop now I'm going to do, to add a little bit more stem to that And you can see that we're, we're getting an iris, but it's a very loose, loose, nice iris. So what can we do from here? Now, this is where, um, this is where I love people to make decisions. So I'm going to take a bit of my white Prismacolor. And even though this is kind of wet, I'm just scoring this a little bit. So if I dint it, we'll get texture. Same as here. If I use my pencil, it doesn't matter what color pencil, I can get some of the lines into the wet paint so it's a way of giving us texture now just what's happening there I'm thinking I'm going to really like to add some pen and ink to this one so as I develop a picture I go oh what can I do here or what can I do there and one of the things I think is just to, to look at your picture as you go along because it's really wonderful say that us to say that you've planned something but sometimes plans don't go to, to the right way so what can you do so I'm using a little bit of gouache here because I feel like I've gone a little bit dark and just adding that in touch it with your finger to lighten it I like that little kind of I always look at the things that make me like a flower so with the iris I'm loving these kind of lacy edges that it has so what am I going to do I'm going to try to enhance those lacy edges because that's what I like about the picture and it may not be what you like about that particular flower but I think it's important to start looking at what we like what we see rather than deciding that it must look like absolutely every other flower that you've ever seen so I'm going to stop this video for a minute let this dry and then I'm going to come back with some ink over the top of this okay so now what I have is some permanent ink and I've just got a bit of a stick or a palm frond and I'm just going to use that to do my sketching so I'm just looking at my picture and why a stick is good is because using a stick makes us loosen up I have to say that this idea I did get off Paul Clark but I do love it I use it a lot now so here I am just I'm not putting every line in I'm doing just loose lines now you could say I liked it before you put the lines on so this is where you experiment and you get your own style and you go okay what is it that I like what visually do I enjoy so art is very much about what you like and what you see so you know um, I sometimes add things and go oh I, pref I wish I hadn't have done that and then other times I add things and I go oh that really worked for me I'm kind of liking this actually and I'm liking the softness of it again we are not trying to create an absolutely perfect image 
I'm sure you would agree that if you look at this from a distance, people are going to know that it's an iris. Now, do we need to show people more than that? Do we need to let people absolutely see what it is? Or do we like let people imagine what they know it is? And I really do believe in art, we also need to um, let our our viewers enjoy the actual investigating of the picture. So if we give them too much, are they actually having that opportunity to assess the picture from their point of view or are we taking that away from them? So think of that in your artwork. Do we need to actually give them everything? And that's why I kind of like that loose painting effect. Now I'm just going to play around a little bit now and add you know little bits of extra color so even letting that black bleed a little bit that is a permanent um, ink that I've used so I have used a permanent ink and but while it's still wet I can still sort of pull it in to create some shadow areas so if I see it here you can see I can just darken things using the ink that's there Kind of blend it in so it doesn't look as much like <clears throat> it was just popped in there with a pen now you obviously can use a pen to do this if you get a little bit too much and you go oh that's too dark wipe it off you know it's what I really love people to do is kind of play a little bit more don't take it all too seriously and kind of get that little bit of style that you get by playing now with this background i'm feeling like it needs a few extra little flicks now the other thing i kind of like to put some something in the back because i'm feeling like that flower's just i wish i had a had an angle or something like that but what can i do to that flower to improve it so what i'm going to do is make sure it's all really dry <coughs> Okay, so I've dried that off. I'm feeling like, mm, I really think I want a bit of greenery behind there and maybe some of those other flowers. Now, again, should I stop here? Should I go forward? Does it matter if I take the risk and go forward? The things that I've really loved about that is using the Prismacolor pencils to actually bring those yellows out and get those bright colors in. I could also do that with my Prismacolors and add some green here. You know, I can see a bit of green in the background. Add a bit of that because it will resist. You know, again, you could say to me, oh my goodness me, I should, you really, Lucy, you should have stopped way back there. But what I want to do with this is push myself, push myself to the point where I make mistakes and sometimes those mistakes are wonderful mistakes and sometimes they're like hideous mistakes but we all make them so that's okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix up a little bit more of this purple but this time i'm going to put quite a bit of ultramarine blue in it because i think those flowers in the background are quite blue and i'm going to put a ton of water in it I don't want those flowers to be really outstanding. I want them to kind of sink into the background. I'm also going to mix up a little bit of this bright green and I'm going to dull it off a little bit with some of this cadmium green. Now I only want, in my mind, I only want this to have a little bit of colour in the background. So I've really got to be thoughtful about how I'm going to apply that and again like I said this could be a terrible disaster 
And I hope you um, challenge yourself to have those. So I'm just wetting this background, not kind of wetting into the flower too much, just with some water. I don't want too much. You can see how lovely that resists. So the lovely thing about the resist is if I now put some of this green over it, you've got all this other bright green showing through. So I'm just putting that down. It's quite bright. I wish I had to put a little bit of a dulling color in it. Okay, and then I'm going to just put some hints of flowers in the background. Now that looks very bright at the moment, but that will dry quite a bit lighter than my flower will. So I'm going, oh, some just hints so that it looks like the flower is in a garden and just some tiny hints of the pink in there too. So you can see now we've got that happening. Now I'm going to dry that because you'll see how much this dulls down and the flower stays nice and Okay, so for me that actually works. I'm happy with I'm happier with that color in the background than I was without it. But I just want to add into this just some I don't know some shapes with my ink just to make it look a little bit like there's a reason we have these extra colors in the background. I'm being really careful to not make it too busy. Now, just to finish it off, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, what can I do to actually help with a little bit of this? So I'm just going to take that gouache that I had here, just some white gouache. Now, the beauty is you can put a little bit of purple in your white gouache too, with a little tiny bit of purple in it, and I'm just going to define a few little loose edges just like I did the other the black with a very loose touch I want to really do this and I'm kind of just scribbling scribbling basically with my rigger brush here it's a size 3 rigger I'm just scribbling and as I scribble with it it is sinking in a little bit but it's also very slightly lightening it and I can see I have some nice little lines. So we've got we've gone from having this very abstract sort of flower to just adding those little bits of detail that make us realize what it is. I'm pretty happy with this so I think all I have left to do is to sign it and I'm even going to use my little stick to sign it. So there's my iris. I hope you enjoyed watching and I think the biggest thing I wanted you to get from this was to try your Prismacolor pencils because they do resist and they are great for your watercolors. Try your watercolor pencils as well because they do help in your um, creating of your images and just play and have lots of fun.